scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Portacot, can you shout a loud hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, it is my joy to be here. When I came in and I saw vibrant people celebrating Jesus, I knew for a shorty that tonight will be someone's encounter in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My honor to God's servant, Pastor Bellamina. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Let's give him a big, big hand clap. And then my honor and salutations to all the men and the women of God here represented. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that tonight Jesus will give you an unforgettable encounter? I give you a guarantee that for some of you this will be the night that will begin another dimension of your life another dimension of your ministry in the name of Jesus now here's what I want you to do for me three things before you sit number one I want you to be very very sensitive as you listen because the power of God follows his word the assignment of the power of God is to validate the speakings of God. That means if the word of God is not sent forth, his power has no assignment. It's important you understand this. That means when you pay attention to the word of God, it means then that you are prepared to experience the power of God. Because the Bible says the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. So I request, number one, that you pay rapt attention, undivided attention, as we hear him speak to us tonight. Number two, I want you for the sake of this crowd, since it is a crusade, do me a favor to be your brother's keeper. Um, especially when the power of God comes upon people. Um, I want you to be very, very sensitive. You don't have to be an usher. Depending on the ushers alone, um, they are going to be stretched because there's a crowd of people. So if someone is under the anointing close to you, please help manage them so that they do not injure themselves. If I do request that you bring them out, then you help to bring them out. Otherwise, you just manage them. Number three, I want your faith to be alive tonight because... I want to tell you in truth that he never calls the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Many of you have left all kinds of things behind to be here. Some of you are here right now with medical reports. Some of you are here right now with impossible situations. Some of you are here right now crying and say, Lord, if you do not visit me, my life, my ministry, my family, 
this God that we serve is a mighty God and in the name of Jesus he will arise as such over someone's life yeah. hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I want you to shout after me say father, father. one more time shout it say father, father. In, the in the name of Jesus give me an encounter tonight <laughs> Turn it into prayer. Go ahead and begin to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Give me an encounter tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we are gathered tonight in the name of Jesus because we believe in you. We believe in your power to save, your power to heal, your power to transform, your power to deliver. We decree and declare that tonight will be an unforgettable encounter. Amen. We decree and declare that everyone in need of salvation will encounter Jesus tonight and that every sick body here represented will be healed every oppressed be delivered in the name of Jesus now before you sit down if you can while we were praying I just sent something in my spirit and if you allow me I'm seeing the number 11, 1, 1. And of those 11 people, the Lord is saying there is captivity that has tied your family down. And God wants to bring you liberty right now. Listen, please. I'm going to pray. And the power of God will come upon those people. I'm seeing the number 11. Very quickly before we get to the word, that yoke of darkness is about to leave i stretch my hands now please i want you to bring them out right now i just saw fire 11 people i don't know what it is that has oppressed you in the name of jesus i command every power that is not of god that has tied anyone's destiny in the name of jesus christ release god's people now release god's people now release God's people now please bring them out if you can release God's people now release them now release them now I come in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that everything that every altar sitting on anyone's destiny in the name of jesus the son of the living god the risen christ be broken now 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 Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. This is our victory in Christ. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. One more time. Sing 
hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won the victory, hallelujah, you have won. Right now I declare, especially for those who are in front, in the name of Jesus, the Bible declares that he that the Son sets free is free indeed. Therefore, by this mantle and this unction, I command every power of darkness over God's people, leave now. Leave now. We bring you liberty that is only found in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. And we declare that this liberty remains permanent over your life. Every legal access the devil has over you, by the blood of the eternal covenant, we declare you are delivered now and delivered forever. Delivered now and delivered forever. Delivered now and delivered forever. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Now you may be seated. God bless you. You may be seated. God bless you. We are going to be very brief tonight. And I want to walk you through, within the minutes that we have, through a journey, a spiritual journey. Because I believe that tonight is a very defining moment for someone here seated. And the many who are following by way of television, following by way of the internet. Hallelujah. I want to describe for you three strategic phases in a believer's life, the believer's journey, so that you can identify tonight which of the phases that you are in and then to know how to release your faith to maximize that which God is doing, especially in this season. It is important for us to be discerning enough to know and to understand what God is doing per time, per season. There has been a global advocacy of the move of God, revivals upon our nation, Nigeria, Africa, and across the globe. And that is correct. Except that if we do not understand the progression of the believer's journey, as far as your walking with God is concerned, you may abort destiny not knowing. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. Now, please look up. Many of you have wondered why it seems as though God uses certain people in very mighty and significant ways. It looks like in every generation, there seem to be a few people who are mightily used by God. Not just in ministry as we know, but in business, in government. And then it looks like a majority of others just crouch around the corridors of destiny, not knowing what to do with their lives. And yet the Bible very clearly tells us that in Christ we have been predestined. Everybody has a destiny in Christ. Hallelujah. Now please listen very carefully. The believer's journey, in fact, for you to be a believer, the foundation of your walk with God is your encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Please listen very carefully. As simple as this sounds, you will be surprised how many people have been around spiritual things, around church. Respectfully speaking, perhaps they have reason to the position of leadership at different levels, but they have never truly encountered the Lord Jesus. They have encountered a man of God. They have encountered um, doctrine, profitable. They have encountered good people. They have served diligently, but they have not encountered the Lord Jesus. The greatest need of an unbeliever that means one who has not received Jesus. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not counseling. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not healing. 
The greatest need of an unbeliever is not deliverance. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not prosperity. These things are all wonderful. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not education. The greatest need of an unbeliever is none of these things. According to divine priority, the greatest need of an unbeliever, listen carefully, is not even an encounter with angels. It's not even the gifts of the spirit. No. In order of priority for your spiritual journey to be correct and profitable. The starting point of everyone's spiritual journey provided it is Christ and his purposes that you desire to see established in your life. The greatest need of a non-believer is an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God. Please write it down. It is important that the Jesus you are describing is the son of the living God. There can be Jesus as the name of someone. I, I understand there's a footballer that has such a name. And there are many other people across the globe that have that name. So that we are not confused. The Jesus we are talking about is Jesus the son of the living God. I don't care what you know, respectfully speaking. I don't care how long you have served. I don't care how morally excellent you are. I don't care how excellent of a commu or communicator or whatever it is that you have that represents an advantage in your life. Spiritually speaking, you have not begun the believer's journey except and unless you encounter Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. But apostle, I saw an angel. An angel is not Jesus. But apostle, I went to heaven as profitable as it is. Going to heaven in a visionary encounter does not automatically translate to salvation. Listen, if we do not call believers and the body of Christ to understand the correct ordinances of the believer's journey, we are going to have so many people around the corridors of spirituality without a genuine identification. When we started with Christ, when we started in the faith, I remember the old folks would come and say, have you received Jesus as your personal? That word personal, not corporate, not we worshipped and the presence of God came down. That is not salvation. I can tell you that many people have not encountered Jesus, the son of the living God, by making a definite, intentional, conscious declaration, acknowledging his substitutionary sacrifice and the fact that he is Lord, he is Savior and King. If you are with me, say Amen. The Bible has a few things to say about Jesus. Number one, it says, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his then now only begotten son. Today we will not say he's his only begotten son. Today we will call him the firstborn among we the begotten. Are we together? So he says that whosoever believes in him, he should not perish but have life everlasting or life eternal. Then he says, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Apostle Paul, in mentoring the church in Rome, gave us the biblical pattern and the biblical, salvation, uh, the biblical pathway for receiving salvation. In Romans chapter 10, please, from verse 8 to 10. Romans chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10. I'll quote for the sake of time. It says that the word is nigh thee. Are we still together? In your mouth and in your heart. Someone say in your mouth. Please shout it. Say in your mouth. Say in your heart. Your mouth and your heart must play an active role. Otherwise salvation cannot be ministered to you. 
Wishing to be saved does not get you saved. Hoping to be saved does not get you saved. Planning to be saved does not get you saved. Crying to be saved does not get you saved. The Bible says the heart and the mouth are the two principal tools as far as the administration of the life of God is concerned. Verse 9 says, verse 9, please give it to us. It says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, not with your mind, with your mouth, the Lordship of Jesus, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it leaves you with a promise. It says, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then it says, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. If at any point in your journey, your Christian journey, you cannot remember intentionally, consciously, and willfully believing in your heart that Jesus came to the earth, he died, resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit to purchase redemption and salvation for you and that you have not verbalized it consciously. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but I have to tell you by the integrity of scripture tonight that as far as heaven is concerned, you are not saved. It's as simple and as honest as that. And let me encourage fellow servants of God and co-laborers in the gospel. It is important that we do not get too advanced to a point where we see as basic elementary or primary the fact that members and people around us need to be saved. Sometimes in a bid to pursue heights and depths in the spirit and that is wonderful and profitable. We ignore what we believe to be elementary the subject of salvation and we do so to our detriment. So we have many people who are sound in Greek and Hebrew. We have many people preaching even in conferences. We have many people who are sound as far as the understanding of the doctrine of scripture is concerned. Except that that is just a theoretical head knowledge like academics. As far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, that work of regeneration that comes by acknowledging Jesus has not happened. Which is why it is possible that you can see very intelligent, very spiritually sound persons, but you do not find the character and the fruit that befits a genuine encounter with Jesus. Because intellectual prowess is not equal to salvation. Is someone learning now? So this is the first phase and the first junction as far as the believer's journey is concerned. The foundation. That means if you ever find anybody who says, I want to walk with God. I want to live a purposeful life. I want to live a meaningful life. The first part of call, you can tell him go to church. You can tell him meet a man of God. You can tell him come for a wonderful crusade like this. But all of these are only a means to an end. The end being Jesus. Jesus had this to say about himself. He said, I am the way. Do you believe that? He said, I am the truth. And he says, I am the life. That no man comes to the Father except through me. In fact, the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. The name of Joshua Selman cannot save you. Even though you love the name, it has no power in itself to administer salvation. Have you met Jesus? Don't tell me I've been in church for 10 years. I congratulate you for your consistency. But as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, the scribes and the Pharisees were already around the things of God. They were masters of doctrine, masters of the law. Yet Jesus looked at them and said, Ye err not knowing the scriptures. He said, The scripture testify of me. Longevity around spiritual activities, as profitable as it is, 
does not automatically bring salvation. That is point one. Is someone following now? So the greatest need of a non-believer, please learn this as a rule of thumb, that every time you see a man who does not know Jesus, more than the welfare that you give him, more than the invitation to church, the greatest cry of heaven over that individual is his salvation not just his children not his academic pursuit alone all those things are wonderful but the highest spiritual priority the point of focus for any unbeliever is that he comes to know jesus now the second phase of that journey are we still together i presume that many of us here by the grace of god and based on the integrity of scripture can boldly say that we are saved that we have acknowledged the lordship of jesus and to those many i congratulate you for making the noblest decision that any man can make as far as this side of god's kingdom is concerned but it does not stop there this is where i want you to pay attention now because many believers who now come to christ do not know what else to do with their lives. Please pay attention. Some of you may be victims of this now. It is true that you are saved, but you probably were not guided to know what else to do. As far as your journey in the pursuit of God's spirituality, purpose, and destiny is concerned. What do I do now that I've encountered Jesus? Many years ago, attending the crusade of the great Reinhard Bonke, they used to have a, a, a leaflet, a little book called Now That You Are Saved. It was an attempt to provide guidance that from the point of salvation, that is only the beginning of the journey. It does not stop there. Unfortunately, there are many believers who come around the gate of the kingdom. You are saved, genuinely so, congratulations. But they are never able to live effective lives. They have dreams of being prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists, businessmen, captains of industry, great men and women who have mighty and marvelous prophetic destinies. But many die without actualizing that destiny because they do not know that there is still a step after salvation salvation is priority and it is the first step but not the only step is someone learning now the second phase of the believer's journey if you're writing please write is called the phase of transformation and renewal so the first is an encounter with the with um jesus the son of the living god that translates to your new birth experience like we call it The second phase is renewal and transformation. Someone shout renewal. Say transformation. One more time. Say renewal. Say transformation. Because you see, according to scripture, the character of the new birth experience is that it primarily affects your spirit first. It is a spirit to spirit encounter. But as you know, man is tripartite. A spirit that lives in a body having a soul the faculties of the mind the will emotion and intellect and all these have roles to play as far as your growing in God is concerned and actualizing destiny so it is possible that your spirit is saved but that your mind is not yet transformed and it can abort the potential of that which you have received in your spirit through the new birth are we together now in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, having their understanding darkened, Ephesians 4, 18, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. So when your mind is unfruitful, you are not able to be a useful vessel in the hands of God. When you get to the realm of renewal and transformation, listen carefully. There are three principal forces 
that must be released in your life for that phase of your life to be profitable number one is the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please write it down while it is true that the holy spirit plays an active role in the administration of salvation there is the office of the holy spirit and the function that he plays in the life of the now believer in christ are we learning now if you are with me shout amen, amen. let the devil hear you shouting amen. amen so i said that the first phase in the believer's journey is your encounter with jesus the son of the living god then you get to the phase of renewal and transformation and this is a long period in the believer's life determined by your zeal not just the grace of god the, the same Lord is rich unto all. It is at this phase that many believers separate themselves into various levels of spiritual possibilities. The same salvation is administered at the point of confession. But now the journey of renewal and transformation, you are introduced to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had time to teach on the Holy Spirit. I can spend an entire week and even here teaching you about the Holy Spirit. But a few things for you to know about the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit is God, not an archangel, not one of the spirit beings, not one of the doves or candles like the Bible shows us in types and shadows. The Holy Spirit is God. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the creative dimension of the Godhead. That means the manifestation of power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also the manifestation of the presence of Jesus to the believer today. That every time you call on Jesus, the person Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father today, the Bible tells us, but the personality who represents his presence every time you call Jesus is the spirit of the living God. He's the Holy Ghost, spirit of the living God. You're the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing everything in obedience to Christ. So the Holy Spirit has an assignment. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit to the believer, listen carefully, is to activate your organs of interaction with the realm of the Spirit. Because the Bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of God. Neither can they profit him because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritual things cannot make sense to you except and unless you are open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? That is the reason why some of you are now active practitioners of the things you once laughed at. For instance, the prayer language of the Spirit. Before you got born again and before you were open to his ministry, it sounded like gibberish. Now you are an active uh, a, a, a prayer person, especially in the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has quickened. The Bible calls it quickening. Then the Holy Spirit is responsible for revelation and understanding very very powerful paul praying over the church in ephesus you find that in ephesians chapter 1 beginning from verse 17 down to 20 paul was praying over the church in ephesus and he prayed that they be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of their understanding be flooded with light that they may know comprehend the hope of the calling that they now were in very very important without the holy spirit the bible will only be a book of history a book of literature it takes the holy spirit to open the mysteries and the riches that are hidden in scripture listen 
the Bible was not supposed to be just read philosophically or intellectually, academically. In as much as the Bible is a book of literature, the Bible is a book of archaeology, the Bible is a book of history, you find the, all the aforementioned in scripture, but there is a spiritual component to the Bible that only the Holy Spirit, my goodness, who is God speaking to tonight? An attempt to study scripture without submitting to the ministry of the Holy Spirit will only frustrate you. For such people, the Bible says, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth because they do not have revelation. Remember the utopian Enoch. He was reading the scripture while he was on his way to Jerusalem, but he did not have understanding. And the Holy Ghost had to speak to Philip to join this chariot. And then the man said, of whom this man spake, of himself or another, it takes the Holy Spirit for you to have understanding. In Isaiah 11, the Bible talks of that stem from the root of Jesse. And it talks about the sevenfold dimension of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord, dominion. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. It talks of the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And then it says it shall make you of quick understanding. Are we still together? Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. I will forever sing your praise it's your spirit that opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.